Today we're taking a look at a build I recently put together in an effort to review the GIM MB8 case. If you don't recall that case, I'll be sure to leave a card above for you, but the TLDR is that the case actually had some nice features, but it suffered from the need to modify the chassis directly out of the gate. That combined with the fact that it just sits at a very competitive price point makes it a really tough recommendation to make. Regardless, let's take a look at what should be a truly competent gaming PC here in early 2021, even if it's probably overpriced due to what is just truly a terrible GPU market. But I digress, let's jump into that intro. As we start looking at this PC, I do have another build coming together in the near future featuring a different CPU and AliExpress Ryzen 1700, so make sure you're subscribed down below so you don't miss that build. Today, however, we're more interested in this build, so let's see if the hardware I picked out can A, actually keep up with the gaming in 2021, and B, if the modification I made to the case gives the components enough air to breathe better than a scuba diver with no tank. Inside this imperfect chassis, we have sitting one of the better values for gaming CPUs on the market right now, that's the Intel i5-10400. If you're planning to build a system around this i5, I'd actually recommend going with the 10400F though, which will save you a few coins and you won't likely be using onboard graphics for anything anyways because it's a gaming rig. The GPU we've paired with the 10400 is the now legendary GTX 1070. The 1070 launched all the way back in the middle of 2016, but it still affords owners great 1080p gaming and even 1440p gaming and pretty much anything made up until the most recent AAA titles like like Cyberpunk 1440p that may be asking a little bit much of the GTX 1070 but everything else out there right now is probably pretty much good to go at 1440p other than Okay, maybe Red Dead Redemption 2. Okay, everything except a few games. The motherboard we're running in this system is a budget-friendly B460 model, which means our 16 gigabytes of dual channel memory will cap out at 2666 megahertz. And this continues to be a way that Intel keeps taking a bazooka to its own feet. The 10400 and 10400F make a ton of sense paired with a B460 board, but you're giving up real world performance by going this route. And it doesn't make any sense to pair the 10400 with a Z series motherboard since it's a locked chip. I know this is a bit of a rant, but this CPU would be much more compelling if Intel would just adopt the AMD strategy of leaving all of their CPUs unlocked and allowing budget motherboards and enthusiast boards as well, the ability to overclock the memory to whatever degree the memory will run at. Finally, and as always, games will be running on a SATA-based SSD. It's also worth noting that this PC costs more right now than it really should in 2021. Obviously, the lack of GPUs on the market is driving this price, but building a similar system to the one we're testing will likely demand about $800 give or take using new parts and a used GTX 1070. Ouch. Regardless, with the specs and belly aching out of the way, I wanted to take a look at five titles that are popular here in 2021, spanning from easier to run games like Fortnite and Call of Duty Warzone to the AAA heavy hitters like Red Dead Redemption 2, Hitman 3, and Cyberpunk 2077. Today we're leading off with Fortnite, and without even considering the averages, the frame rate nearing 300 FPS is a great indicator that this PC can handle Fortnite at 1080p, and likely even higher resolutions on whatever settings you want to play the game. Now getting into the specifics a little bit, Fortnite at 1080p on the low graphics preset ran at 299 FPS on average, with a 1% and 0.1% low at 186 and 105 respectively. At those frame rates, it's unlikely you'd notice much of a stutter in the gameplay, even if you drop from 200 plus FPS down to around 100 FPS for a brief moment. Needless to say, the experience in this particular title was absolutely fantastic, and to be honest, that's exactly what I expected from this hardware configuration. Another multiplayer geared title that I looked at was Call of Duty Warzone. This title was run at 1080p on low settings and once again the experience was excellent. Unlike Fortnite, the average frame rate was nowhere near that crazy 300 FPS mark, but this system ran at an average of 116 FPS with a 1% low of 85 and a 0.1% low of 76, well above that 60 FPS average that PC gamers like to stay north of. Just like Fortnite, this hardware had no problems avoiding major frame time spikes, keeping the gameplay not only at a solid frame rate, but also avoiding any sort of stutters that can happen when frame times spike too drastically. 
Once again, this game gets an easy pass on this particular system. And now we switch over to single player titles that are geared more towards eye candy. The Red Dead Redemption 2 benchmark was run on high settings at 1080p, and even with these settings, the 1070 and 10400 combined to average 41 FPS with 1% lows at 35 and 0.1% lows at 33. Now, with those frame rates a little bit lower than I like to see, I would probably recommend dropping settings down a little bit in an effort to hit that 60 FPS average number. But if you're into running games with as much eye candy as possible, this game did give us very consistent frame times in the built-in benchmark. In other words, you won't see much stutter in this title, even though we're well below 60 FPS here. Next up is Cyberpunk 2077 on medium settings at 1080p. Here we see an average FPS of 59, a 1% low of 48, and a 0.1% low of 43. One of the struggles of this game in particular with lower end hardware is the game's ability to slam your CPU into submission with large crowds of people, dense environments, or just lots of cars crowded into an intersection. Fortunately, the 10400 keeps pace here, allowing that GTX 1070 to stretch its legs. Just like Red Dead Redemption 2, you certainly have some room to drop settings down just a little bit to hit a consistent 60 FPS average, but with a slower paced game like this, you may just prefer to leave the eye candy on and enjoy that scenery. Finally, the Dubai benchmark built into Hitman 3 at high settings at 1080p ran exceptionally well. First and foremost, the developers here deserve a hat tip for launching a game that looks pretty good and more importantly runs well at launch. Regardless, this title on this hardware runs very well. Here we have an average of 111 FPS with a 1% low at 86 and the 0.1% low at 40. Now looking at those numbers, you may assume there's some stutter here, but those low numbers are happening when the benchmark transitions to a different scene inside of the benchmark. If you take a look at the real-time frame rate chart in the footage, you can see that when the scene switches, the frame rate briefly drops. So even though the 1% and 0.1% lows look well, low, there's nothing to worry about here. The game runs great. Temperatures of the system are also worth mentioning here. As you can see in the footage, temperatures are no problem in this case, at least with the minor case mod to move the fans inside the main part of the case to allow for more room near the air intakes on the front side of the chassis. That's not surprising considering the case has three fans up front to work with, so airflow is good and therefore temperatures are fine. So at the end of the day, pairing an i5-10400 with a GTX 1070 and 16 gigabytes of RAM is a very good gaming configuration. The downside is currently the cost. The prices of even older GPUs like a GTX 1070 have skyrocketed in recent months. There's a lot of factors in the market right now working against GPU availability and as a result the GTX 1070 is currently going off at least as of the time of filming for $300 to $325 on places like eBay. A system like this won't come cheap and that's what makes it really hard to recommend gathering together this type of configuration at least right Right now. Instead, I'd recommend building out a gaming PC with a similar CPU and RAM configuration, but with a stopgap GPU instead of the 1070. That'll give the GPU market time to at least cool off just a little bit. Fortunately, the i5-10400F, the CPU I'd recommend instead of the 10400 used in this build, is generally available right now at normal pricing, and motherboards aren't hard to find. Also, RAM is still at generally attractive prices, so the rest of the components are fairly readily available at solid prices. But as always, those are my thoughts, but I do want to hear from you. If you've been able to successfully put together a solid gaming PC like this one in the recent past without breaking the bank, let us know all about it in those comments down below. Also, if you like this video, give it a like, share, subscribe, and comment. All those things are very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.